Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week, we're gonna be working on a console that I have been wanting to get my hands on for a very long time. This is the Pioneer CLD A100, otherwise known as the Pioneer Laser Active. These are really cool consoles. Uh, they're not exactly video game consoles per se, but they can be if you have the right accessories. So this is a laser disc player that also can play CDs. And as you can see over here, there's a little compartment here. Um, and, and Laser Active had these packs um, that you could install into the system. And if you had the right pack, you could turn your Pioneer Laser Active into a Sega Genesis with a Sega CD attachment. Or alternatively, you could also turn it into a TurboGrafx-16 with a uh, TurboGrafx CD uh, accessory. And so that's exactly what we have here. So this Laser Active has the TurboGrafx-16 pack installed. And this pack is by far the rarest version um, that you can find. Uh, you can also tell that this is the American version because it has the TurboGrafx-16 logo on it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at this TurboGrafx-16 pack. So um, it does work, so that's good. I mean, actually, everything is, is working with this particular unit. But these have a lot of surface mount capacitors inside of them, and they come from the early to mid-90s, and caps from this era are notorious for failing. Um, in fact, a few weeks ago, I actually repaired a Sega Genesis pack, and it was completely uh, in really bad shape. So we really like to take a look at this, especially since this is a really rare um, console and a really rare accessory, and we're going to see if we can get this thing fully working. Okay, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is actually eject this pack here. And you can see there's a button here that says Pack Release. On this particular unit, for whatever reason, this button really just doesn't work very well unless, and this is hilarious, but if you flip the console uh, upside down, <laughs> and now if I push that button, let's see if I can find it, comes right out. No problems. <laughs> so I don't know if that's something that's just unique to this particular console or if other people who own a Pioneer Laser Active have the same problem. But I just figured I'd put it on film because if you've got one and you can't get the pack out, try turning it upside down because that worked for me. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and take this thing apart. All right, so taking this thing apart now that I've gotten it out of the system is actually very easy. On the back, over here, there are five game bit screws. So if you have a game bit screwdriver that you would use to open up something like, say for example, a Super Nintendo, this is all you need, very simple. Okay, so now that it's opened up, you guys can see that um, it actually looks pretty good. You know, this does work, so, so just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with it yet. Um, and I don't see any visible damage from these electrolytics. But um, like, like I said to you before, these come from a period of time when uh, electrolytics were really badly made. And a lot of them are failing and starting to fail right now. This is something you really see in um, Game Gears, for example. Uh, like I said, about two weeks ago, I repaired a Sega pack, and the damage from the caps was really extensive. So because this thing is really special and rare, we're going to go ahead and just preemptively do this for preventative maintenance reasons. So, um, yeah, but otherwise, you can see that this is actually in really excellent shape, and it's got the standard hue card slot. Um, I'm guessing that the NEC proprietary chips must be on the underside of the board, so we're going to open this up a little bit further and take a look. There's just two screws here we've got to remove. All right, so I did end up taking the entire thing out and it took a little bit of extra work. I had to find four small little black screws. There were two on the underside and two on the side here to just remove the front faceplate. And once I did that, I was able to very easily get the board off. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd show you the underside and you can see there are a bunch of NEC proprietary chips down, down here. These are the ones that are typically associated with the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine. Um, some of these are probably related to Turbo CD related controls. Um, but yeah, all the work we're going to be doing today is focused on the top of the system. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be, you know, replacing a whole bunch of um, surface mount capacitors. And so I'm going to just focus on, on this one right over here to just illustrate what I'm going to be doing. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and replace the whole board. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna start by just removing this capacitor, and you can either remove them using heat or you can use a mechanical method, which is by taking a pair of pliers and carefully rotating it to the side until the legs break off. I normally prefer to use the plier method because um, it's frankly quicker and it um, doesn't require any heat, which means that I don't have to worry about these little surface mount components getting blown off from the hot air. Um, but I don't always use this. I, I basically do it depending on how the, pa the pads look and how the caps look. These caps look like they're in good shape and the pads look fine, so I'm going to go ahead and use this method. If they were a little bit more fragile, I might consider using the... Um, the hot air method. But anyway, to do this, what you want to do is you take a pair of flat screw, you know, a, um, a pair of pliers with, with some teeth on it, like the one you see here. And as you can see, I was just rotating it in one direction, not going up and down, but just going side to side. And without very much effort, these legs will break. You should take your time. If the legs aren't breaking, just, you know, go slow with it. And you can see that the remains of the legs are still, are still down here. So let's just go ahead and pick that off. There we go. So yeah, you can see that the legs are still there. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is just clean that off. Okay, so now I've just removed the old, old legs. Okay, so now that the legs are gone, we're just going to clean these pads off. You can use solder braid to do that as well, but I like using the desoldering gun because it's fast and simple. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and just clean the area with some isopropyl alcohol. And so now you can see there's no electrolyte, everything's all nice and shiny and ready to go. So when you're doing this, you should pay attention to the orientation of the caps. And normally there's some kind of indicator on the board about the direction of the, of the capacitor. And so you can see that right here. There's a little plus here that tells me that the cap is supposed to go with the positive side facing towards, towards me to the, to the right. So now we're just gonna get our new cap. And so I will add fresh solder to one side only and then just slide it in after heating up the pad. Sometimes you can use pliers to do this too if it's too close to your hands and you don't want to risk burning your hands. And then we're going to go ahead and solder in the other side. I may use flux sometimes, just depends on the circumstances. This one is just fine though. And we are good to go. We've got one new cap. All right, so let's go ahead and start working on the rest of the board.
taking a brief time out from the soldering montage to just show you what um, kind of issues I'm running into on this board. So on the outside, these joints look fine for each of these original capacitors, but as you can see, when you take some of them off, there's some very clear signs of problems. So these four were 47 microfarad capacitors, and you can see that all four of them were in some sort of state of failure, and they've left a lot of corrosion on the board. So you definitely need to be careful when you're working on a board like this. And uh, thankfully, so far, everything's working just fine. I haven't pulled any traces. I haven't run into any issues, but still, you got to tread very lightly and very carefully, and this is an example of why. All right, so back to the montage. So I've got everything put back together and we're going to give this thing an initial test. So I'm going to start with a TurboGrafx-16 game. I've got good old Legendary Axe. And one thing that's interesting about this console is that you actually have to have the cartridge inserted. You can't like power the system on and then add the cartridge or remove the cartridge. You have to make sure that this is in before you power it on. Um, so yeah, I've got everything plugged in. Let's see what happens. Awesome. Okay, so we're booting straight into Legendary Axe. And I'm using a Avenue Pad 6 here instead of a standard TurboGrafx controller. The reason why is that unlike a standard TurboGrafx-16, this uses an 8-pin mini DIN connector instead of a larger 8-pin DIN connector. Uh, the pinout is the same, but uh, it's just a little bit different in terms of the size. Well, okay. This is looking perfect. Okay, so now that we know that this is working, let's go ahead and switch over to the TurboGrafx CD. So to do that, we're going to power on the console again. And it brings us to this really cool little menu here. And so you can make a choice as to open up the CD cartridge or the larger LaserDisc cartridge. Now, there are a few laser active Turbo CD games, I think like two or three or something like that. The same is true for the Sega Genesis pack. But unfortunately, I don't have any of those to test. So I'm just going to grab my copy of Rondo of Blood. This is just my test CD. Let's see if it works. So normally with a TurboGrafx CD, you have a separate, um, a separate card um, that you need for, for Turbo CD. But in this case, it's already built in. So you just put your CD in and you should be good to go. Let's see if it works. All right, there's our Konami logo. Awesome. So it looks like everything is working properly. The TurboGrafx CD portion is working fine, and the TurboGrafx 16 portion is working fine. So, so yeah, this thing has been fully refurbished, and it should be good to go for a very long time.
So yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have uh, videos out like this every Friday. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And then of course, if you've got a system that you need to be repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, well, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.